Well, I'm joined now by Professor Richard Barr from the University of Durham, who's a galaxy and ga galaxy cluster expert, and we've just been talking about galaxy clusters in the previous session, uh, and you came up with a pretty interesting fact that most of the um, baryonic matter, that's protons and electrons and, and, and normal atoms, in these clusters isn't in the stars, it's in the gas, is that right? Yes, so that's right. So you can measure this very, you can measure a lot of the stars and you can measure the mass in the diffuse gas and you see that only 10% of the, all the baryons, etc., are actually in the stars. And in fact, the same is true for the universe as a whole. It turns out that the measurements you get in clusters are pretty representative of the universe altogether. So, it's one of the big problems. Uh, why is the universe so bad at making stars? You know, initially you might have thought, oh, well, it's hard to make galaxies. How are we going to explain this? Actually, it's very easy to make galaxies and stars. The problem is stopping the universe making galaxies and stars. So it's a, it's a puzzle that's been around for a long time, but it's something I think we've now got a good grip on. And maybe the grip is the role of black holes play a key role in limiting the amount of the baryons, the gas in the universe that actually gets to form stars. So it's very exciting and we saw a couple of talks um, demonstrating that this seems to be the only way to go. We can't do it with normal supernova type physics, we need to do it with the black holes themselves. Very exciting. So in the current universe, in the present day universe, is there not a lot of star formation going on? Uh, relative to the universe maybe at redshift 1, so that's halfway back to the Big Bang, the amount of star formation in the universe is about a tenth of what it was at those epochs. So, if you like, the, we're in a big recession, you know, a cosmic recession, there's very little star formation. Great question is what's going to happen in the future, is there any sign of a recovery? Well, I think we don't know yet, certainly not from an astronomer's point of view. Inside galaxy clusters, what are conditions like? Um, is there star formation there? So, so the conditions in galaxy clusters are definitely very hostile. So one of the big interests at the moment is to understand what happens to a galaxy, maybe like our own, when it falls into a galaxy cluster. We know that process is happening all the time. Galaxies are being accreted. Eventually, the Milky Way gets, falls into the Virgo cluster nearby. And we want to know what happens to galaxies in those systems. So there's a big argument um, about what processes are important. I think observationally we know that there's little star formation in the clusters, but the question is why? And so some of the talks we had were about what's called ram pressure stripping, and that's like if you drive along in your car and you stick your hand out of the window, you feel the wind rushing past your hand and trying to push your hand backwards. And the same happens to galaxies as they try to orbit around a galaxy cluster. Um, so some people think this is a very important process that prevents star formation in cluster galaxies. Personally, I don't think it's so important. I think it's more important is just that galaxies have no fresh supply of fuel, right? so that they s stop forming stars simply because they use up the cold gas that's in their disks. In the cluster, they have no means of accreting new material and continuing their star formation. But that's a big debate. I don't think everyone agrees with me. And it's something that we're going to find, figure out the answer to that very shortly, I think. That's within capabilities of our simulations mm -hmm. at the moment. In one of the talks given today, um, it was claimed to have discovered a galaxy cluster very far away, the most distant one. How do galaxy clusters assemble? How do they form? How quickly? So the, the, the galaxy clusters form from big fluctuations in the microwave background in the early formation of the universe. There are some regions where the matter initially is rather dense compared to regions around them. And then uh, the role of gravity is those dense regions attract material from around them and so they, they grow and they grow and they grow. And it's uh, what we call a non-linear process, so that once they start to grow a little bit, they grow faster and faster and faster and faster. So these dense sites early in the history of the universe grow very quickly and become today's rich galaxy clusters. Now, the current models for the uh, origin of cosmic fluctuations predict that there isn't a big range in these structures. So at any particular moment there's a characteristic, a particular mass of structure that's collapsing and a few objects that are more massive than that and a few objects that are less massive than that. So in the present day universe we think this is kind of the epoch at which galaxy clusters are forming. As we go back in time we'd expect less clusters to form 
and so on. So today's um, talk on that is very challenging because it was claiming a large galaxy cluster at redshift 2. Um, how many light years away is so, that? So, oh, how many light years away? So it's like two thirds of the way back to the Big Bang. It's a better way to do it. Um, and it's quite hard to understand how such a big system could have assembled so early in the history of the universe. Now, of course, maybe it's just a one-off, a very rare object, and we could accommodate that in current models, but maybe it also requires some change to the formation of the whole universe. Um, I'm reluctant to uh, subscribe to that quite yet, but if more systems like that are discovered and we maybe have some revision to make to the underlying cosmological model. Sounds like the implications could be quite, quite, quite big for our understanding of the universe. If we were to come back to this meeting in 10 years' time, uh, what questions do you hope will have been answered by then, and what challenges do you think there would still be? Wow, that's a good question. So I hope we, uh, we understand a lot more about the formation of the galaxies. We understand why the universe is so poor at forming galaxies. The question I'd like to be asking is, that what about the future of the universe, and what's going to happen in the future? Understanding much more about the role of black holes and how the whole uh, formation of galaxies, clusters, black holes, and everything links together into a single model. And maybe to understand the future of the universe in those terms as well. Okay, well, it sounds like the future is going to be an exciting. It's certainly one. very exciting. Okay, Professor Barrow, thank you very much. Thank you.